come many shadows. Shadows of greed and hate, jealousy and fear. Darkness is the absence of light. So in the sudden shadows which fog the minds of men and women are to be found the strange impulses which urge them into the unknown. Dark Venture. And now the American Broadcasting Company presents Lou Merrow in The Miser. Dead. Hey, relax, She's dead. Miss Parsons relax. dead. All right, She's you said that dead. 20 times. She's Slow down. Relax. Let me get some of this down. Say her name is Parsons. Uh, Emily, Emily Parsons, yeah. Emily Parsons. What's the address? Uh, 875 West of Avenue. Uh, any further information? Yeah. Yeah, plenty. After what I saw today, I couldn't keep it to myself. Oh. You know who killed her? Yes, officer. I killed her. Yeah. You heard right, officer. I killed her. You think that's such a terrible thing, huh? You didn't know Miss Parsons, did you? And you didn't know the spot I was in, biggest jam in my life. And you think she left a finger to help me? No. Let me tell you how it was. I... I got this job about four months ago as a clerk at Charlie's Food Market. Nothing much, 30 bucks a week, but it was a living. That first day, I reported at 7 o'clock in the morning, and Charlie, the owner, was there to start breaking me in. I remember one of the first things I did was pick through the fruits and vegetables, put all the stuff that was turning a little bad into a box. And then I asked Charlie if I should take it out and burn it and incinerate it. Burn it? No, always save this stuff for Miss Parsons. Uh, she'll be in about half an hour. But it ain't much good. Well, she's not particular. I give it to her at a special price. Also, uh, leftover pastry, anything like that. Oh. One of those poor names, huh? Poor? <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> Old lady Parsons worth a million bucks. <laughs> million bucks. Yeah, that's the first time I ever heard of her. I wish it would have last. I wished I'd have dropped dead before I ever went to work at Charlie's. Anyhow, right at 7.30, like Charlie said, the front door opens, and the little old lady in a long black dress comes on. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Miss Parsons. Do you have something for me today? Yep. Everything in this box. Also, this uh, bag of noodles. The cellophane got ripped, but the noodles are okay. Oh, that's fine. Oh, there's enough here to last me for a week. How much, Charlie? Oh, make it uh, 50 cents. 50 cents? But isn't that a oh, little... Okay, you give me what you think it's worth. Well, I certainly don't think it's worth more than 30 cents. Well, all right. I ain't going to argue, Miss Parsons. Thirty cents. Here you are. Thanks. Oh, well, the box is heavier than it looks. Yeah, okay. Pete. Yeah? Uh, Miss Parsons only lives a couple of blocks away. Would you carry this home for her? Sure. Be glad to. Woman with a million bucks eating a grocery store's leftovers? How do you like that? And she lived in an old shack that looked like if a guy sneezed, the whole thing would blow sky high. Inside it was dark and there was hardly any furniture. Also, it was cold. Uh, put the box down on the chair. Okay. Uh, uh, say, uh, say it's none of my business, but... It's pretty cold in here. Don't you have any heat? Oh, yes, I have a gas heater. Now that I'm back from the store, I'll turn it on and light it. Well, 
flare. Now it'll warm up soon enough. Yeah, but that isn't no, not my... much sense turning on the gas burner when I'm not in the house, is there? Well... well that only runs up the gas bill, you know. Well, just the same, I only wanted to tell One you... One sure way to hold on to your money is to be frugal in everything. And remember this, young man. When you got money, people respect you. <laughs> First, I couldn't believe that anybody with a million bucks or even a buck fifty-five would live like that. I started delivering her uh, groceries regularly. And she showed me scrapbooks with articles about her father. Yeah, she must have had the dough all right. Her father was one of these uh, financial wizards. And the last article, which told of his death in 1924, said he left an estate of three million bucks. <laughs> But a couple of weeks after I started working at Charlie's, I forgot about Miss Parsons, though, because I got a chance to latch on to a little bundle of my own. Yeah. It happened on Monday morning about ten days ago. I'd opened the store like I usually do when I swept out the place, picked over the vegetables for Miss Parsons when the phone rang in the back. It was Charlie telling me he'd be in at 9.30 to pick up Saturday's receipts of 900 bucks and make a bank deposit. Then, just as I hung up, I heard the front doorbell tinkle. Yeah, 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 I'll be right with you. Good morning, sir. What can I do for you? You can open that cash register and keep your mouth shut. Hey. Hey, what are you doing with that gun? Come on, open the register. Ain't got time to fool around. Yeah, 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 sure, 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 okay. I Look, mister, I... I, I'm a married man with three kids. Come on, come on. Hey, is this all you got? Fourteen dollars and some change? Uh, well, yeah. You see, we just opened up. And all I... right. I'll turn around and study that wall for a long time. And just keep remembering those three kids. As soon as he was out of the store, I looked into the cash register to make sure. The dope... He hadn't paid any attention to the white envelope with Saturday's receipts in it, more than $900. I hurried to the phone to call Charlie. Ah, that Charlie sure was a lucky guy. Even when he got held up, the crook overlooks the big dough and takes only 14 bucks. How do you like that? Hello? Charlie, Charlie, this is Pete. A guy just came in and helped me out. What? Yeah, yeah, just a couple of minutes ago, but listen. $900? No, no, Charlie, Charlie, listen. Did you call the police? No, I, I thought I'd call you first and tell you. Call the police and then call the insurance company. It's a good thing I took out that insurance. Charlie, would you listen to me? I, I only wanted to tell you. I'd have got 900 bucks if it wasn't for that. But, they never catch guys who hold up grocery stores. Nobody will ever see that dough again. But, Charlie, don't call you listen. Call the police right away. I'll be right down. But, Charlie, don't you understand? You didn't get the 900. Charlie. He hung up on me. Uh, I am. All the cops, he said. <laughs> the dope, he never even gave me a chance to tell him. Police department. Uh, this is the assistant manager at Charlie's Market calling. I, I have just been held up. What's the address? Uh, the 1227 Harding Avenue. All right, I'll get a squad car out there right away. How many men were there? Oh, just one. How much money did you get? Hello? Yeah, I heard you. He got $914. It was too easy to do anything else. I, I didn't have much time, so I, I hid the envelope with the $900 and a box of overripe vegetables I'd collected for Miss Parsons. The cops came within a few minutes, and Charlie was right on their heels. But they didn't bother me a bit. The first chance I got, I grabbed Miss Parsons' box of vegetables and started out for her place. But first, I went into a drugstore, took the envelope of money out of the grocery box, bought a stamp, wrote my address on the envelope, and dropped it in the mailbox on the corner. It was just as easy as that. Then I went up to Miss Parsons. But this time, she wasn't alone. There was an important-looking guy with a briefcase. And when I was coming in, he was just leaving. All right, Miss Parsons. Should get the first check in about two weeks. Well, that'll be fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Morning, Mr. Parsons. Oh, uh, uh, that's Mr. Humphreys, my my financial advisor, you know. 
Oh? Yeah, some of my government bonds are matured, and on the first of next month, the government will send me a check for $2,000. And that's only interest. Yeah, swell, swell. Here's your groceries, Miss Parsons. You see what comes from investing your money wisely, Peter? Oh, yeah. Of course, I don't have to worry about that. I'm always broke. <laughs> I thought I was making a big joke. But as things worked out, it didn't take me three days to blow every dime of that 900 bucks. A couple of poker games, a big night with a girlfriend, a visit to the neighborhood bookie, and I was right back where I started from. But if I thought that was tough, I found out how wrong I was. Yeah. I was alone in the store yesterday morning when a stranger came in. Oh, uh, hello. You're Peter Nolan, aren't you? Yeah, but I don't think I know you. Uh, my name's Duncan. I'm special investigator for the insurance company that paid your boss, Charlie, $900. Oh, well, is Charlie around? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Charlie's home. He won't be until this afternoon. Oh. Well, Charlie's in for a surprise. Surprise? Yeah. Yeah, the cops picked up the crook who robbed you a couple of weeks ago. They did? They did, huh? Well, that's swell. <laughs> swell, yeah. That sure is a surprise. Oh, but that's not the surprise I'm talking about. No? The real surprise is that this crook says he didn't take the $900. Huh? No, he only got $14 and some change, according to him. According to him? Huh? That's a good one. That guy ought to write jokes for, for Bob Hope. Didn't get the 900 Huh? What does he think is going to believe something like that? I believe it. Oh! I believe it. I've talked to so many of these guys, I can tell in five seconds whether they're lying or not. Oh, but I... This fellow's got no reason to lie. He's a three-time loser. $14 or $900. Doesn't make any difference. He's through. All right. All right, then if he didn't take the dough, I'd like to know what happened to it. Maybe it melted away. How much do you have left? What are you talking about? How much do you have left? You saying I took it? I ought to bust you one for that. Okay. Uh, what's Charlie's home phone number? Uh, Sunset 32166. Go ahead. Call him. Tell him what you told me. You'll laugh in your face. Go on. Go on. Go on. Ah. You know, what you did wasn't so original. I run into it a dozen times a month. Go ahead. Go ahead. Call him. And later on today, I'm going to have my lawyer call you. Yeah. Oh, hello, Mr. Harris. Hey, wait a minute. Holding the hook down won't help. As soon as I leave here, I'll call him again. Give me a break, will you? Just answer my question. How much of the 900 do you have left? Nothing. Not a dime. How much do you have in the bank? A 50-buck Christmas fund. How much can you raise between now and tomorrow? Not 900 bucks. Well, you're going to raise 900 bucks, or I'm telling Charlie, and he'll throw you in jail. No, listen. You listen. I work for the insurance company, not for the police. It's my job to try and save us money, that's all. Now, if you happen to find an envelope with 900 bucks in it somewhere in this store between now and, say, uh, 12 noon tomorrow, why, it's okay with me. But I tell you, I can't. And I tell you, you've got to. After the insurance investigator left, I wanted to bat my head against the wall. Where was I going to get 900 bucks between now and tomorrow? No loan company would give me that kind of dough on my salary. I couldn't ask Charlie. And who? Who? I went around the store like a crazy guy, kicking things, smacking things. I kicked over the box of leftovers. Miss Parsons wouldn't like that. I kneeled down to pick the stuff up and... And it hit me all at once. Miss Parsons. Sure. Oh, oh Peter. You come in. Hi, Miss Parsons. I decided to save you a trip down to the store today. Oh, but I... Here, I'll put the box right here. Yeah. More cooking vegetables, eh? Yep. Yeah. I sneaked in some good spinach, too, but don't you tell Charlie. Well, I don't think I should buy any of these, Peter. 
My doctor advised me to eat nothing but uncooked food for a few days. Oh, well, you keep it for later. It's a gift from me to you. Oh, thank you. You're quite welcome. Uh, Miss Parsons, uh, it's none of my business, but you're pretty well fixed, aren't you? Of course. Why'd you ask? Well, I remember last time I was here, you were saying something about getting some dividends from government bonds. Uh, yes. Two thousand. As a matter of fact, I received my first check in this morning's mail. And with all your other capital, well, it wouldn't hurt you much to... to... Yes? Miss Parsons, I'm in the worst gym of my life. If I don't get 900 bucks today, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so you came to me for help. You're the only person I know, and it would only be a loan. See, I'd pay you back with interest. Well, I could give you the money as a gift and hardly notice that it was gone. No, 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 just loan it to me. That's all I ask. Well, you're a nice young man. You've been very good to me. If I gave you the money, I, I wouldn't think of taking it back. Oh, gosh, Miss Parsons, I, I, I don't know what to say. Yes, I could go to my bureau and give you the money out of my petty cash this very moment. Miss Parsons? But if I did, I would be doing you an injustice that I could never forgive myself for. Miss Parsons, I... Huh? Yes. The only thing that really counts in this world is independence. The ability to stand on your own two feet. Oh, but listen to me, my I... My father used to drum that into my head again and again. Stand on your own two feet. Yes, ma'am, I Accept know Accept but... nothing from your neighbor but respect. All oh, right. Forget about the gift. Lend me the money. Strictly business proposition. Oh, my father had a lot to say about the institution of money lenders, too. No, I'll never be a party to any such business. But if you knew what a jam I was in... Well, you'll find a way out. There isn't any way out. Not if you won't help me. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't go against my principles. Principles? Why, you old miser, what kind of principles have you got? Living like a dog in this sack, eating food we ought to throw in the incinerator? Too cheap to even turn on the gas heater and warm your house? Piling up your money for what? For what? If you've quite finished, you may leave my house. Yeah. Yeah, sure, it's a pleasure. But when I got out on the street, I didn't feel so tough anymore. Tomorrow at 12 o'clock, my whole life was going to be smashed to pieces. The only thing that could save me was 900 bucks, and here this old dame with so much dough, and she gives me a line about principles. I could go to my bureau and give you the money out of my petty cash, you... One of these nights, somebody was going to break into that sack of hers and dip their hands into that petty cash and... Hey. Yeah. No, no, that's crazy. I'd be the first one she'd suspect. She'd tell the cops about me asking her for dough, and then I... An old lady with nothing to live for but money. She wouldn't tell the cops if... She wouldn't tell the cops if she was dead. I left my room at 2.30 in the morning I lived more than two miles from Miss Parsons' shack But I was going to walk it Nobody was going to see me I'd taken a couple of shots of gin to kind of keep me going And my mind was as clear as a bell The old dame didn't have nothing in the world to live for Nothing but that dough I kept saying that over and over and over again As I walked like it was a line of a song it was a little after 3.30 when I came to the street, and everything was all dark. I started getting the shakes when I went through the alley behind her shack, but... But just thinking of that insurance detective waiting to throw me in jail straightened me out. Now I was walking up to the back of the shack. The door was locked. Walked around to the bedroom window. Yeah, it was open a few inches. And by the faint light of the moon, I could see that she was in bed. I started sliding the window open, but I kind of lost control of my nerves for a minute. I kind of got weak in the knees, and, and after a few deep breaths, I started raising the window again. Now I crawled over the ledge. Easy, easy, easy. I kicked over a chair. She was reaching for a bed lamp. I couldn't have that. I rushed over to the bed. My fingers closed around her throat. Oh, please, please, please. 
And then I started to freeze up. All the strength drained out of me. It was such a terrible feeling. My fingers against the wrinkles. Oh, please, please. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. I had a killer. I had a killer. But I couldn't. I had to. I had to. I had to. <sighs> and I realized she'd gone limp. I thought for a moment maybe I'd killed her. But now... Now she was breathing. She'd only fainted. Well, maybe that was all I needed. Maybe I didn't have to kill her after all. And then it hit me. Pete. She'd called my name. She'd seen me. Yeah, I did have to kill her. But how? I, I stumbled around the room looking for something, anything. I... <laughs> Bumped into a gas heater in the dark, and I... Gas heater? Yeah. Yeah, I could kill her that way. Yeah, I started feeling all right again. But first, the money. I remember what she said about the petty cash being in her bureau. I went over to it, started opening and closing drawers. Where was it? Where was it? I couldn't waste any more time. Uh, this tin can must be in here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, here's your money... I... I this was only loose change, a dime and some pennies. It can't be that... What's this? A check. A government check. I jammed it into my pocket. Looked through the rest of the drawers. There wasn't anything else. That was okay. $2,000 government check. I know a guy named Tom would take government checks for 50 cents on the dollar and no questions asked. I could get a grand out of it. Yeah, that's all I needed. Hey... Parsons? She was acting like she might be coming out of it. I had to move fast. I went through the house making sure that the doors and windows were closed good. Then I ran over to the gas heater and opened it up full blast. After that, I went over to the windowsill and pulled the window down after me. I crouched outside the window watching it was after five o'clock in the morning. The sky was starting to lighten up just a little. I crouched there until my wristwatch told me it was ten after six. Watching her through the window while the house filled with gas. And in all that time, she never moved once. I knew she'd never move again. Then I remembered. This was my morning to open the market. If I wasn't there at 6.30, I might have to answer questions. Okay, okay, I could still make it all right. First, I wanted to look at that check. I reached into my pocket, but before I could get it out, I saw the milk truck in the alley. How long it had been there? I hadn't even noticed it before. Then I saw the milkman coming out of one of the other yards, and... Hey! He was coming right into Miss Parsons' backyard. I tried to jump to my feet, but I... I couldn't move. I crouched beside the window so long my legs had cramped up. What was I going to do? I pressed myself against the side of the shack. It was still pretty dark. Maybe you wouldn't see me... He was knocking on her door. If he should smell the gas, then... Miss Parsons. Oh, Miss Parsons. I felt my heart beating in my throat. All the time was getting lighter and lighter. Any second he might see me. Uh, oh, well, I'll get you later. Oh. He was going away. He hadn't seen me. I was okay, okay. I waited until I saw him going to another yard, then... Slowly, I forced myself up. Pain shot up my legs till I saw stars, but I had to get out of here. I forced myself to limp along. And gradually, the stiffness and pain left me. I got to the store at 25 to 7 and opened it up. There were no customers that early. I was plenty glad. I looked like a wreck. If anyone saw me like this, they might remember it when they heard Miss Parsons had been killed. I went in the back of the store, washed up, put on a clean shirt, made myself some black coffee. And gradually, I began to feel like myself again. It was a quarter to eight already. Later on, when Charlie got here, I'd ask for a couple of hours off and go downtown and sell the check to that guy, Tom. Yeah, I was all right. I pulled a check out of my pocket. It was all watered up. I started smoothing it out to get a good look at it when I heard the front doorbell tinkle. My first customer. So I jammed the check back into my pocket and started for the front of the store. Good morning. Anything I can... Huh? 
Do you have something for me today, Pete? No. No, no, no. It can't be you. It can't be. Do you have something for me today, Pete? No, no, no. You're dead. I killed you. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. I beat it out the back way when I saw her, and I ran all the way over to the station, but... But now I, I realize it was just my imagination seeing her like that. But, you know, I'm, I'm still glad I, I told the truth. So you murdered the old miser woman for a $2,000 government check. I was in a spot. She wouldn't help me. It drove me nuts. Yeah. Well, give me the check. Huh? Oh. Oh, sure. Sure. Here, here, here. You never did finish smoothing it out, did you? <laughs> yeah, now you can look at it. Yeah, I... I... Hey, this is the wrong check. It's the only one she had, isn't it? Yeah, but this is only for 37 bucks. Look here at the bottom. It says what it's for, right on the corner. Why, welfare, appropriation, old age... Pe- hey, what is this? She had millions. She wouldn't be taking an old age pension. Why, why she even had a financial advisor, uh, Humphreys. Humphreys? <laughs> he was a social worker assigned to the case. She was a pauper. Every cent her father had left her was lost in the last depression. Hey, wait a minute. How do you know all this? Because Miss Parsons was here ten minutes ago and told me. No. No, I tell you, she's dead. I turned on the gas heater. I watched her die. She's dead. Gas yes, heater? When she told you she was only eating raw foods, that should have tipped you off. <laughs> Poor old dame. She was really broke, all right. Your turning on the heater didn't mean a thing. The gas company shut off her gas three days ago. Shadows of greed and hate, jealousy and fear. Darkness is the absence of light. So in the sudden shadows which fog the minds of men and women are to be found the strange impulses which urge them on to their venture in the dark. Adventure is written by Larry Marcus and directed by William T. Johnson. Next week at the same time over most of these ABC stations, we'll bring you another original story from the land of the shadows. Dark Venture, Lou Merrill was heard as Pete. Others in the cast were Irene Tedrow, Jack Moyles, Barney Phillips, Herb Vigran, and Sandy Bickert. John Lake was the narrator. Original music by Basil Adlam. 